Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this, this is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making them happen. And today I'm talking about the MakerMate M2, which is basically a CNC machine which is vertical that goes straight into your garage, cuts beautifully, and I'm gonna go through the process on how to set this up, what problems you may or may not face if you're thinking about buying one of these, and of course, if you've just got one and you can't quite get it to work, I'm gonna guide you through the process and hopefully help you out. So please hit that subscribe button and the like button if you feel so inclined to do so. Subscribe button's more important though. And let's get straight on into it. When I was installing this sucker up here, that there is a port that you plug into, which is the exposed port is this one, the lower one on the board, and obviously this power supply. What I found is there seems to be an issue and actually you have to use the other port. So um, I'm guessing somewhere here I'm gonna to have to drill a hole uh, so I can actually fit this correctly. But um, if you're having problems with it and it's not working, it's apparently set to the incorrect port. I don't hey guys, know. I was just doing my M2 update video and I've come across a slight issue. Now, what you'll notice on this particular device uh, and this cutout, that this is the port that's exposed, but this is actually the port that you need. So what I've done is I've just got a Dremel, basically just cut this around a little bit, but that port is one of the reasons that you're probably gonna have a problem if you haven't read the manual correctly because it does tell you that that's the right correct port to use. And don't of course forget to wear gloves, unlike me, which you know you should be wearing gloves. Anyway, drill that port out, you'll find that you're gonna have a much easier time and if you do go for the laser later on, um, the port, the other port will be available. The three cables that are hanging down here, you're gonna to wanna to put an anti-snagging loop in here. Maybe bring it up and put it to a nail, little bit of slack to be left there so it doesn't pull the cables out when the router is moving. And this bit is basically the Z-axis. Make sure that you tighten up that belt. Do it while it's on the board and you'll probably have a nice easy time. I have before. So when you hit it, it, when it explains to you on the YouTube channel is that you need to select your port, select your board ray, in this case it's 38.4. Um, then you need to get this information. If you don't get this information, nothing is going to work. So uh, again, when you uh, when you hit the buttons, you want to make sure that you can get all this information up and all that kind of stuff. So on today's video, watch me modify the M2 box so you can access the correct port. See how not to open a box with a 3D printing spatula. Become impatient and do the same thing twice just days apart from each other and witness the unboxing. Build and first cut of the Maker Made M2. Hit that subscribe button right now. It'll give me a mushroom which will make me double in size. I thank you. So that starts we mean to go on. Sorry if the video is a little bit all over the place, certainly the beginning bit, but if you're the type of person that's looking for YouTube to try and find out exactly what's going on and want to get the answer straight away, that's the reason that I've put it at the beginning and not the end. Anyway, during the manufacturing process of the plastic box or the plastic duo box, the incorrect hole was cut for the controller connection. And instead of having a big cry, out comes the Dremel to mob the box and open up the gap to access both. You can see from the documentation which port you should have used. It's not a tough job to open this up, but do it first as I would advise cutting this rather than drilling as it could break the plastic. And while I'm at it, I want to say thank you to MakerMade for this amazing product, which is in all intensive purposes, a business in a box. So what do I know about this unboxing? Well, other than using a spatula to open the box, I know that this product has impressed me from the get-go. MakerMade have moved forward with the development of the original Maslow. MakerMade, in its name, means that these products are produced by the makers, and I know that the guys and the girls behind this are incredibly passionate about what they do and it's certainly impressive to successfully launch a product in the middle of a pandemic. Hats off to you Maker Made. Speaking of hats, order your Maker Made hat now at MakerMade.com. So my friends, the ooh. When you open the box, we'll say it's all. This is the Maker Made M2 upgrade kit. So if you already have a Maslow setup and the motor's installed, this upgrade gives you a new Z access frame, Arduino, duo board with protective case, spring, a couple of new router bits, laser mount for the new JTEC laser that's coming out soon, and access to the Maker Made CNC software, Makerverse. The key differences are really seen on the board, the change of cable and the box with the hole, which is incorrectly cut into it. But moving on <laughs> along from side of that, this is epic. It's a real improvement from the original Maker Made product that they launched and you will see a significant difference not only to the speed but also the cuts. If you are considering one of these and hopefully you are, make sure you hit me up and I'll give you a little code that might save you a little bit of money. And finally, the Makita RT0700CX4 240V router is the weapon of choice for my setup. 
Well done, everybody. We are five minutes in and we're moving on to the next section, which is the M2 build by Maker Maid. Are you ready for this? I know I am. Right, here I am in my lounge. I shouldn't be using this on the table, but I am. Now, what I did earlier on is <laughs> I had the old style sled and I installed everything onto the old style sled because I wasn't aware that they were going to send me the new sled. Now, the new sled has some significant differences from the old one. Most notably the two inch dust collection pipe, which you can clearly see there. And you'll also notice here, this is when I scratch my sled because I've still got the drill bit installed. Make sure you remove that drill bit before you do yours. And you'll also see a routed part, which has a bit of acrylic on it. So you can see the dust being extracted as it cuts. So this is a pre-made sled with the M2 logo and Maker Made logo on it. Uh, it also includes all the pilot holes. So it's ready basically just to put your screws in or your bolts in and just install it. Very, very easy. Also, you'll see that there's a 65 millimeter spindle mount kit, which I changed out as well. Uh, Maker Made has also sent me one of those, but I haven't installed it yet. There are two pieces of software that you're going to need to get your head around. Makerverse is the Maker Made platform that talks to the brain of the M2, and Easel, which is a free or premium product, depending on your flavor, by Inevitables. Easel is an online platform which takes a little getting used to, as the middle of your work area is in fact zero zero. So this means in layman's terms, you need to center your proposed cuts at the very bottom left. This takes you off the page. I've also had challenges with the cutting depth. So if you're working on an M2 easel video, please contact me to discuss. So as we draw ever closer to the end of this part, just make sure that you put the little T-nuts in correctly and they are nice and tight so that that bit doesn't move. I've also added a couple of little L brackets as well, just for a little bit of stability, not that it really needs it. And right now I'm just installing the ring, which is going together incredibly well. So there you go, guys. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them in the messages below. So there's a couple of things I want to mention right off the bat. One, this is considerably faster than the Manslow. I mean, they're saying 40% and I'd sort of probably agree with that. The other thing is, is because we're able to use these smaller routers, they're not even as loud as the last lot. So I had a real issue before where, uh, you know, this was, this was considerable. Now, obviously I've only got it on one at the moment, but let's turn them up. Even then, it's not that bad. Turn them back down. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Vast improvement over the last one, so very good. I really want to cut something now. So this is actually this is actually a pretty good test because <laughs> this is actually a uh, a pretty good test due to the fact that you can see the speed, you can see the speed of your Z, you can see where things are going to get caught up if away for a few minutes. Obviously, be make sure that you're in the room if you ever try to do any of these kind of cuts. But what this is showing me is a couple of things. First and foremost, that my Z-axis probably needs to be adjusted because uh, otherwise it's just going to chew straight into the wood and it's going to probably break the, uh, the bit. The other thing it's showing me is actually the speed improvements that Maker Made have made on this. And I tell you what, it's certainly a hell of a lot quicker than it was before. Plus, you don't have this big bit kicking out the side here. Um, and again, I'm seeing that these cables are going to become a problem for me, especially if things start getting gummed up or impede the fact that uh, the Z-axis might not move backwards and forwards. So um, this is going to work out really well. I'm thinking it's actually going to be uh, bottom left. I could be wrong. I think I'm wrong again. I am. Why is it going top right? It makes no sense. Okay, so the trouble that I was having just there is that basically in Easel, I didn't have the middle set to zero, zero. Now, on Easel, as you'll see here, if I zoom in, you'll see that zero, zero, the X and Y axis here is basically the very middle of your plate. Now, that doesn't transition particularly well to how this is built, but of course, 
there's lots of different routers out there lots of different cnc machines out there and you know this is the one that you're probably going to have those kind of issues with but i guess if you can calculate exactly how wide your cuts are going to be you can take that as half and I believe it also dead centers as well, so it shouldn't really be a major issue for you. But again, like I say, easel is, uh, is something that I'm gonna have to get my head around. You might have a suggestion which is, hey, why don't you just hit this button and that might just work, but certainly at the moment for me, um, I haven't been able to do that. But all these unique shapes, the difference in cut depths, the darker it gets, the, the more uh, cut depth you have. And there are a bunch of different options in here. So if you wanna build a box and you wanna basically hit that button, make a width up, add all the bits and pieces to it, it will basically just add that straight to your um, straight to your cut. And if I generate this a little better, you might be able to see that, um, which is in here. And again, you can just generate whatever you want. And it's, it's pretty flexible. It's web-based as well. Uh, but it has a bunch of different uh, options in here, which, you know, um, warping paths, exact sketches. Uh, and what I've been using a lot of is this honeycomb thing, uh, which is pretty cool. But, you know, as I said previously, this is basically a business in a box. So using these types of uh, you know interlockers, image tracing, all that kind of cool stuff, it's it, it really gives you some flexibility at such a massive scale, eight by eight by four. Uh, and again, you just set your material up here, very very easy. Uh, but again, you know, once we get into this on moving this onto this particular board, um, you know, that's what I'm gonna get to. So this is a desk. Uh, believe it or not uh, and the idea is that it's going to be cut across here it's going to be cut in here and then I'll basically sit inside of that this disappears because that's just something something else this is a MacBook um, hole that I'm basically going to place my MacBook in so it's all, all dead centered in there and uh, my monitor will basically sit along here so uh, that's what I'm cutting out uh, I'm just going to do the beginning stages which is basically just going to be this particular part and then I'll carry on with that at another video stage so hopefully this has helped you out if you know any of this information on how to center this bloody thing then please let me know I'm guessing that I don't know I don't even know I don't even want to try it but if you do know what what needs to be done here then please hit me up what I will show you as well you can also simulate exactly what's going to happen on these cut paths as well uh, so you get a good idea of exactly where the router is going to go uh, or the spend 2 certainly is going to go first and that'll give you a, a good indication here um, so as you move this along it'll show you all the different paths so the first bit we're going to do is let's move this over is what you're going to see you'll see these um, uh, parts being uh, cut and machined on the top left hand corner then you'll see the San Prentice uh, logo being made up there and, and we'll probably just get to, in fact, we'll probably just do this first bit and see where we get to after that. So here we go with the M2, brand new, on the board. I'm looking forward to this. So what I'm trying to make here is a new desk for my uh, kind of recording area. I'm using a sheet of MDF, um, which I'm hoping is gonna create quite an interesting kind of design and packet. The idea of this is that it's going to be cut along here and there's going to be a section that comes up here. My monitor's going to sit along here. It's going to have a few logos and bits and pieces and it should be kind of relatively cool. So we're using the Makita. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the name of it is, but it's a Makita. It's tiny. It means I don't have to jab myself in the side when I walk past. I'm dead excited about that. I've had one or two small little weird problems with the chains and it actually wasn't the chain in the end. It was the motor. It was just slightly out of alignment didn't show up too much on the um, on the Maslow, but it did on the M2. And I think that's mainly down to the speed. And the speed on this thing in comparison is very, very noticeable. They were saying, for, you know, 40%, and you know, they're probably right with that. It, it, it seems to zoom around and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's brilliant. So I'm dead impressed with that. The only thing I haven't done is you'll see this massive pipe down here, which is basically uh, gonna be throwing out all the crap that's gonna be coming off this thing. Um, I haven't, put a, uh, I haven't put a vacuum cleaner or anything attached up to that yet. So I'm gonna do that now, then I'm gonna hit the button and I'll see what happens. Enjoy.
Boom. So we're back in the room. Thank you first and foremost to Patrick and Sarah for hooking me up with this Maker Made Maslow M2. It is brilliant. The CNC performs incredibly well. The only kind of little bits and pieces that I need to kind of sort out is going to be with Easel and obviously just learning the software. But first cuts are in and they look brilliant. And I'm going to continue doing that over the weekend and hopefully publish some more videos on my Instagram and back on YouTube when I finally installed the desk and show you what the whole setup is. So any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comments section and hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time. Don't forget also to head over to makermade.com and check out what their fabulous offers are on these CNC machines at the moment and join the Facebook group. We will see you next time. Bye for now.